This video is brought to you by not having to download a 40 gig patch of bug fixes on an already released game. Cyberpunk. Hello fellow Novians, my name is Rob and welcome to another video in this tutorial series. Today we are doing a request, uh, a requested video on warp drives and atmospheric re-entry with a heavy load. So because they are kind of related, I'm just going to put them both in this video and we will talk about that as we get there. But first off, let's talk about warp drives. This right here is a warp drive. It comes in one standard size. So whether you're in an extra small core or an a large core, there is no extra large core yet, yet, um, this is what it looks like. It is the same size no matter what. There is no large, small, medium uh, version of this. Okay, okay. So how does it work? Well, it consumes warp cells to get you from point A to point B in a very fast manner um, and it cannot be uh, interdicted at, yet uh, that might be a feature later but um, you'll get from point A to point B and nobody can stop you or interact with you or anything like that till you get to your destination so it is great from going from safe zone to safe zone since every planet has a safe zone around it um, you can just jaunt right through PvP space so how much warp cells does it cost well that depends on your mass and the amount of cargo so be aware that the amount of warp cells it takes you to get to a location may double or triple to get back from a location so always plan ahead with warp drives you don't want to you know you might say oh it takes 60 to get to sakari well, you jump to Sicardi, use 60 warp cells, and then you load up on ore, and you got nice two or three kilotons of uh, chromite uh, or something else, uh, natron or something like that. Um, and then you go to warp back, and it's like 600 warp cells. And you're screwed and unless you have the money to go buy them overpriced on the uh, market because um, people will always sell on these planets for a higher price uh, than they actually cost on Alioth. So, um, how do we get the warp cells into the warp drive? Well, we just link a container to it. You can just link your car regular cargo containers. Um, I choose to have a separate cargo container just for the warp cells. Um, so I, I have this container relay for my ore. And then I have another container relay up top, which we'll go look at for my warp cells. So I just made a little table here and I stuck the container relay on here. And you can see inside we have 312 warp cells. Um, and that is just directly linked to the warp core. And that is how the warp core gets its warp cells. It just pulls it straight out of the cargo. You don't need a fuel tank or anything else special for that. Um, how do you use your warp drive? Well, you have to link it to your command chair. Um, so I believe it's the chair to the warp drive. If we go into build mode and look at our handy dandy linking tool, I'm just going to hold control and you can see there is a line coming off my chair, which is right here. Um, oh, that's going to the, to the dynamic core. So one of these goes to the warp drive. Maybe it's that one. Nope. Oh. Yeah, core, slot one, core, warp drive, right there. Um, so that one right there is going from the chair to the warp drive. Um, and that means I can activate the warp drive from this seat. Um, beware that you probably want to link all of the stuff that you really want um, to ensure gets linked to the seat first um, before you install any uh, HUD or uh, other uh, dynamic uh, properties. Um, so if you're using DU Orbital, and I have an entire video on that, uh, you can just go ahead and watch that video if you're interested in DU Orbital. 
if you're using du orbital before you go in here and um, load the custom auto configure uh, you want to make sure that like your warp drive is linked to the chair um, your radar is linked to the chair and your data bank is linked to the chair basically anything that you want to ensure gets linked um, because as soon as you run that default auto configure it's going to run through all of the components on your ship and start linking them one after the other and depending on when it gets to the warp drive it might run out of slots before it gets there um, and the same thing with uh, putting a chair down and running the default auto configure um, flying construct if that's if that's what you're doing instead again you want to link the chair to the warp drive first so that it doesn't get booted off the list because the chair can only hold 10 slots so if we go into the lua code here we see it can only have 10 slots um, and my warp drive is in slot 2 because I manually linked it so you see radar warp drive those are the two that I manually linked first to ensure uh, that they get in there because um, what you don't want to happen is you don't want to run the default auto configure get into space and you're just trucking along you go to hit the warp drive and you realize that it's not linked um, you can get out of the seat at that point uh, you might get pulled back into the atmosphere uh, all kinds of stuff um, so that is how that works and once everything is linked you can get in your seat and the way to use it and ensure that it is actually working is to open up your map go to system and I am going to Alioth so I'm gonna set warp point and that is going to tell the warp core that I want to go to Alioth I can also set my destination there either way but the important one is set warp point all right and now that I've set that you see that we have a window over here if this window does not pop up when you set warp point it's because your warp drive is not linked to the chair and we want to look at the warp cell cost so because the developers are French they write things in reverse so I have 312 cells and it's gonna cost me 298 cells so I have uh, I have enough warp cells with a little bit to spare to get me back to Alioth. Um, if this right here read zero, so if it said 298 uh, and zero, it's because the container was not linked properly and you need to go back and do that. Um, you might also know that it says planet too close and cannot warp. So when I get far enough away from the planet, this will change and disappear and this will change to warp and I just go ahead and click on it and it will warp me. Um, so let's go ahead and get into space. I am going to use the uh, DU orbital uh, autopilot. Oh, right, I'm in my tab menu. Uh, so I'm going to select uh, Alioth and the interplanetary helper, and then I'm just going to go ahead and raise up here and engage autopilot, and that's going to take me into orbit. As a side note, the autopilot does not work if you get out of the chair. So don't think I'm just going to set the ILO pilot and then get out of the chair and go run around the back of my ship naked. Um, you will crash. And then they'll find your naked corpse among the ashes and the remains. And as mothers often say, make sure you have clean underwear because you don't want that on the coroner's table. Which is funny, because when you die, you poop yourself. Uh, handy fun fact. All right, so we're taking the Scantron Max up and out of the atmosphere. I am uh, at the safe recommended weight lift for this ship. It will carry more, but it will become harder and harder to control. So if you don't have max skills, um, you probably want to stay within the safety parameters of how much your ship is able to lift. And I'm on Sakari where the uh, gravity is only 0.4 G's, so this will just break orbit no problem. It's when we get back to Alioth uh, that we have to worry because the heavier the ship, the uh, more fastidious you're going to have to be coming into orbit. Um, so we'll just let this go up, and as we're doing that, uh, let me tell you a little story about warp drives and how they function in PvP space. So you may think that uh, if you just slow boat your ship, uh, you can just kind of keep your finger on that warp button. As you slow boat, 
and you know i don't want to i don't want to use warp cells i don't want to pay for them i feel like that's losing money well if your ship gets blowed up by pirates you're gonna lose a lot more money and the pirates have been particularly active as of late i have seen more than one person um shouting about it on the uh, discord and in uh, game chat and on the forums so be aware um, the thing about slow boating is that the warp drive has a cooldown if you get hit so if a uh, pirate or another player uh, manages to land a successful script shutdown that is not good Crap. Let's talk about script shutdowns in this video. Um, one just happened. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, if that ever happens to you, you just get out of the seat and you uh, you get back in the seat. I think the autopilot has picked back up. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that is that can be scary. Um, you just want to get out of the seat and get back in the seat as fast as possible to reinitialize the HUD. Uh, that is actually the first time that that. What the fuck? And it happened again. I I am frankly flabbergasted. Okay, let's not use the autopilot then. I'll just manually point in that direction and go. How very strange. Anyway, back to our story time. Uh, if you're slow boating through uh, through PvP space, and the enemy manage to manages to land a hit, your warp drive will go into a cooldown phase where you won't be able to activate it for like five or ten uh, seconds, or twenty seconds, or forty seconds. Uh, I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> I just know it goes into a cooldown. Um, but that cooldown refreshes every time you get hit. So basically the enemies can lock you out of warp drive. Um, so don't think like, oh, I as soon as I get targeted, I'll just smack that warp drive button. Um, if they manage to if they manage to land a hit and you don't have let's say that you don't have max um, uh, max sensor skill, so like max radar skill or you're not in a, uh, a space radar chair um, and you don't have that whole skill maxed out uh, and you don't have a large radar on your ship, um, you may not be able to see them before they hit you uh, because max ra if, if the enemy has their max radar skill trained up and they have their max um, like railgun skill trained up, they could hit you with a railgun before you even see the uh, you've been targeted message. And if they do that, you can't warp uh, so slow boating can be very dangerous it's just safer to go from safe zone to safe zone uh, and that is my little cautionary tale anyway as we see um, doop, doop, doop. let me hit tab so I can get my mouse open this now says activate warp so if we go ahead and hit that it's uh, gonna stop the ship you'll get the little message warp drive initiated and foo here we go and yeah, you see my HUD turned red. It's because we just we're going through PvP space now. But I am in warp, so nothing can actually attack me. And it takes a little bit the further out you are. Even going whatever this number is. One, two, three, one, two, three, nine million kilometers per hour. Almost ten million kilometers per hour. And we have arrived at Alioth, and you see the HUD turned back to blue because we're now in a safe zone again. So Warp Drive is the bane of pirates. Um, I would not advise going through a PvP zone or trying to slow boat. Even if you have a Warp Drive ready and your finger is on that button. Because uh, all it takes is one lucky shot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set the destination to our base, Chimera HQ, which I invite any of you to come check out. 
If you want to VR over to Camara Shipwork Showroom, you can see all of the ships that we have on display there, uh, including this ship, the Scantron Max. Uh, and if you would like to join the org, uh, we do offer discounts for org members. And remember, you can be in more than one org at a time. So if you have your own like personal org and you want to be in our org at the same time, no problemo, as long as you you know are willing to uh, help out with mining once in a while or something like that. Um, and we don't mind putting like your ships on display or whatever, uh, if you're a member. So yeah, give us a look up. Uh, the organization is called Chimera. Uh, if you hit F2, no, that's F3. If you hit F3 and you go to search and you type in Chimera, boop, or right here, you just click on the name and you click send application. Cool, cool. All right, so now we're heading back towards Ilioth's atmosphere with a full load of junk. Um, if you hit the X key three times, we'll go into the projected long mode trajectory. And you can see that it is kind of landing over there. That is where I would land, um, as I said in my ship flight video. If I cut my engines right now, that is where I will crash. So. What do we want to look at when we're coming in heavy? Well, we want to look at how what our kilometers per hour is, and we kind of want to curtail that. So I'm actually going to put my cruise control on, and I'm going to lower this down to uh, 3,500. Um, just because the faster you get, the longer it's going to take you to break. And if you are heavy, you might have an issue breaking. Um, if we go back out of uh, cruise mode here, um, you can see if I hit, if I kill my engines and I hold control, um, we slow down relatively fast, but it's like 100 kilometers per second. So if I was close enough to the atmosphere, I would still hit the atmosphere hard enough to damage my ship. Um, so we want to take that into account, and I want to make sure, like if I was at 5,000 kilometers per second, it's going to take me a lot longer to slow down with a full load than it would if I was empty. So we're going to spool back up the engines here. I'm going to go back into cruise mode and put it back up to uh, 3,500. And that's just a good way to keep your uh, forward momentum um, locked. And the way you get into cruise mode is Alt-R if you did not know that already. Um, the other thing we want to pay attention to is this little dial right here. And this is how fast we are falling. Uh, towards the crown of the planet. I do not want to let this get too high, regardless of what my speed is here. So as we get closer, I'm going to start uh, feathering my brakes. But I'm going to wait until I see the uh, the planet numbers up here that I'm getting close to atmosphere. I'm going to wait till I actually get the, uh, the display over here, which it will be my... Uh, my distance from atmosphere. So I'm not actually in the planet's gravity just yet, or I'm not close enough to see the orbital uh, altitude. So we'll just keep going like this. It does take longer, obviously, uh, to get where you're going when you're not doing like 6,000 kilometers per second. Um, but safety is your friend when you're carrying a heavy load unless you just want to slam into whatever you're trying to get to and then repair it uh, which it will end up costing you a lot of money in uh, gold because uh, that's the fastest way to repair you know or uh, some other tier four or tier three or All right, so with the cruise, you can also see my for my uh, falling momentum uh, is not too bad as we get to about 30,000 or 20,000. I'm going to start feathering the brakes so that I can get that number over here down to about 250 meters per second.
And usually, if you're using D orbital, I usually wait until I see the countdown, um, which will show up on the screen shortly. Uh, that tells me when I'm about to hit the atmosphere, and that's just kind of my marker. Uh, you can use whatever marker you want. Uh, you could just say, you know, at 30,000 feet, I'm going to start feathering the brakes. Uh, obviously, the more weight you're carrying, the more you have to be careful. Um, if you're over carrying, your engines might, your atmospheric engines might not be able to get you. Uh, uh, or keep you airborne once you get into the gravity's pull, uh, depending on your forward momentum. So now I have that Alioth Atmosphere Countdown Timer up there at the top. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start feathering my brakes to get that number up there down into around 200. Because I do not want gravity to grab me while I'm going 400 meters per second towards the ground. And that's just science, baby. Uh, I also want to make sure at the same time that my forward momentum is not dropping into like uh, under sustenation speed. So you probably want to keep your kilometers per hour above 500. So that's why I feather my brakes so I can let that speed uh, forward speed to keep up while I keep my falling speed low around like 250 and like I said this may take some time um, okay now I'm like within 15,000 meters I'm actually going to drop my cruise speed my uh, cruise set down to about 1300 kilometers which is right on the nose of burn speed and we're at a nice 234 meters per second fall uh, so as soon as I grab the edge of the atmosphere my engines should atmospheric engines should spool up I'm actually going to come out of cruise boat here woo we're going way too fast yeah I'm probably going to break a component so holding the brakes now I damaged two components, so not bad. 99% element integrity. That means I probably lost one HP off of something. And we're in the atmosphere. So we got a nice going forward here, right? Right. So that is how you enter atmosphere carrying a lot of weight. Uh, you just be careful. And that is where I will end the video as I come to approach on Chimera headquarters here. If you like what I do, by all means, go ahead and smack that like thumbs up button. Um, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button if you want to be notified every time I drop a video. Uh, if you have any requests or comments about what I should be covering next or something that you don't understand, as long as it's not Voxelmancy, I will be happy to look into that and do a video on the topic. So until next time, I will see you out there in space. Stay safe.